talking about stars, aren't we? One of the brightest of them, the stars of rock and roll, I mean, brightened up the night for thousands of his fans. And Hampton Pearson has a report on Bruce Springsteen's Capital City Serenade. <laughs> If there is a king of blue-collar rock and roll, Bruce Springsteen is it. And last night in the nation's capital, more than 52,000 fans paid homage to the boss. It was the climax to two weeks of Springsteen fever that had totally gripped this city. By showtime, scalpers were asking and getting up to $250 a ticket. But these days, Springsteen fans will do whatever they have to to see their man. Paid hundred dollars a seat, but it was worth it. We got our tickets, uh, compliments of a congressman. We got a hundred dollar seat, 14th row on the floor. It was great. This is the last leg of a worldwide tour that began 13 months ago. Now, 100 concerts and millions of fans later, the man they call the boss is still indeed born in the USA, but his music belongs to the whole world. Hampton Pearson, CBS News, Washington. And we think we've got one of the more unusual rock and roll reviews you're going to hear coming up. Phyllis George talks with Senator Bill Bradley of New Jersey to get his views of the Bruce Springsteen concert. That brings us up to date on the news. Let's check in on weather on the day baseball died. Steve Baskerville. Yep. The boss was in control at Washington's RFK Stadium last night. It was the opening performance for the final leg of Bruce Springsteen's Born in the USA tour. And here with a review is a rock and roller from way back and another native son of New Jersey to boot. Bill Bradley, also known as New Jersey Senator Bill Bradley. He's with us in our Washington Bureau. Thanks for coming in, Senator. Good to be with you. How about giving us a brief description of, uh, well, it doesn't have to be brief, just a good description of what the concert was like last night. I thought it was incredibly enthusiastic. I thought Bruce was at his top form. I thought that he had the audience. He uh, was extremely enthusiastic. I thought it was a great evening. All in all, you enjoyed every minute of it. I, I always do. Any other political types out there in the audience other than yourself? Not too many. I took uh, Tom <coughs> Downey, congressman from New York, and uh, Bill Cohen and his wife were there, but uh, that's about it. We hear you had earplugs in your ears last night. Is that true? No, I find that when you're seated right next to the amplifier in a, in a stadium of 60,000 people, that if you want to do an early morning broadcast the next morning, you better have at least your right ear with a little <laughs> cotton, which is what I did. Okay. Why is Bruce Springs being such a popular figure? Well, I think that uh, in rock and roll, being an old rock and roller myself, that he kind of bridges the generations. I mean, he's part Elvis, he's part uh, Chuck Berry, he's part uh, Buddy Holiday. And he does it with a real enthusiasm. I think that he, his images, of course, are images in many of his songs of the Jersey Shore and of New Jersey, so there's a special significance for me in those songs. But I think even beyond that, he grips people and tells them that their life's important, that they have to persevere. So you think he's a, an American hero in a sense? Well, I think he's a performer who's captured the imagination of the American people, I think for the right reasons, and that is he goes out there and works. I mean, there are good times and bad times, but what his music says and what he uh, exemplifies when he performs is that the work every day is what leads continuity to life. We hear that in the middle of the concert last night, he gave a mini lecture on draft and war. What was his message? Well, I don't think he gave a lecture. I think he was simply saying uh, that people should uh, be aware of the world around them and inform themselves because there's got a lot at stake. I think that's particularly true for all Americans. That's a positive message. That's a message of participation and involvement. And it's done with enthusiasm. I mean, Bruce Springsteen is uh, an incredible talent, and there he is engaging you to be involved in the democratic process. Yesterday, I picked up a copy of USA Today, and there you are, Col picture why Senator Bradley loves Springsteen. You wrote an article on Springsteen. Why? Well, uh, first because he burst on my imagination when I was uh, kind of reaching political maturity and trying to express the essence of New Jersey. And as I listened to his songs, I kind of felt in a funny way that we were trying to do the same thing. And so he captured my imagination at that point. And since that time, he's gotten better and better. And of course, you're both uh, New Jersey boys. That's right. <laughs> okay, Senator. Thank you very much for joining us this morning. Thank you. We'll be back right after this. Thank you.